Hi, Anila Yaho here. In this tutorial, I'll go over UV layout. First, let's understand what UVs are. If you can imagine unwrapping a box along the edges, as in this case, UVs are 2D layout maps created to pin the 2D texture on a 3D object at the desired placement. All primitive objects have a default UV layout to start with. Depending on the object and the texture we want to apply on these objects, we can work with default UVs or create new ones to produce 2D texture maps that works best. On each object in 3D modeling is assigned a material which specify characteristic properties like reflectivity, transparency, smoothness and color or texture just to mention few important ones. The material uses a shader which through some mathematical calculations defines how a model interacts to light. There are many different materials or shaders for different type of objects. When choosing a material or a shader, you start by knowing what type of object you are going to texture. For example, for a store window glass, which has a specific amount of reflectivity, transparency, smoothness and color or texture, I would choose a specific type of shader most used for that purpose. In Maya, there are many shader presets for each material, which makes it easy for you to get started on building a certain material. Now, the store windows have scratches, dirt, and sometimes type written onto it. Texture is the image we can produce from a camera or from a software like Photoshop or Substance Painter and gets applied or connected to the material node of the glass to give that tint of color, the dirt and scratches, and also the type written onto the glass. I've digressed a little to get back to understanding what role do UVs play in all this. UVs serve as well-predesigned map for the textures to be applied on the 3D object. UVs are 2D maps of 3D objects. In other words, UVs which are made out of vertices and edges, but called UVs, pin the texture on the object at the desired placement. Without correctly laying out UVs, the texture won't appear as you'd probably like to unless it's one flat color image. Now that we have a bit of understanding of what UVs do, let's delve a bit deeper into how to create them. We can access UV editor from the UV menu tab up here on the menu bar. UVs are laid out in the 0 to 1 space, which is the area that the texture reads. These are two identical primitive spheres with two different textures. We don't need to do anything to the UVs for these spheres because the default UVs works perfectly fine since we have a very simple object and a seamless texture applied to it. The problem starts when the shapes are irregular with bumps and holes like a character's face which requires manually laying out UVs. What we're seeing here is this character's head UV map. The face have a complex shape and the texture cannot be just a flat color. Sometimes adding a beauty mark to a face texture or a tattoo can emphasize certain character or personality. So it is worth knowing how to lay out UVs manually. But before we get into this advanced complex process, Let's see some simple ways of using some automatic tools inside UV menu bar. Let's check out the simplest one, the planar UV layout. Here I have a plane. I simply created this polygon plane. Under the UV menus, I can go down and check out uh, the different ways of laying out UVs. The green color tells us that these were new for this version of Maya. So I would go for a planner since this is a flat plane and it's the simplest to understand and to start with. If we go to the option box, it's a good habit always to start by resetting the settings. Next, down here we have the fit projection to best plane or bounding box. 
bounding box is uh, exact the size of the object. Project from uh, x-axis, y-axis, z-axis or camera. Camera is whatever view we see at the moment, that is the camera. If I go to the camera's setting for, uh, let's say, either resolution or film gate, so this is the projection uh, to be considered from the camera perspective. Now, planar projection is going to lay flat on this plane and is going to be projected from the perpendicular axis, which in this case is the z-axis. So we select the z-axis. And then let's go ahead and apply. We see the manipulator fitting in the bounding box of the mesh. At first it looks daunting, but not to worry. There are some colored shape indicators on each corner which scale the UVs proportionally. And the ones halfway through the edges can help us scale the UVs disproportionately. Notice we get feedback on the UV editor. At one of the corners there is a T-shape like icon which if we click on take us to some more settings to work on with UVs. First we'll see a blue circle which if we click on it will show up all the rest of other manipulators that can allow us to rotate UVs, move and also scale. When you play around with this manipulator, keep an eye on the editor as it takes time to understand it, but it gets better with practice. We can access these planar projection properties also in the attribute editor and we can make changes from there too, if we like. If I wanted to add texture on this plane, I'd start by giving it a new material. In the object mode, select new material. Sorry, it's cutting off from the recorded view here. I'm going for a simple Lambert, just to illustrate my point. And if I want to change the material afterwards, I can always do it from the attributes editor. Then to the color node, I'd feed in the texture, select File, then Image Name Folder. I have a glass texture I'm going to use here. And finally, I can continue working on mapping the UVs as I would like to show in the 3D object, making sure to use the 0 to 1 space of the usable area. Now if we go to the UV layout, select all the UVs and scale them. We are scaling down the UVs, however the image is enlarged. Why? Because this texture that is laying out from 0 to 1 space, it's been used only to the area where the UVs are projected. So only this area here is being used in our shape. The rest of it is thrown away and this is not a good use of the texture. So again, the idea is to be able to use the most of this texture area in the UV editor. I'll leave it here. In this tutorial, we went over understanding what UVs are, why we need them, and we had a quick look on UV editor. We also learned to use the automated UV planner projector. In the next tutorial, I'll go over some other projectors and delve a bit deeper on the UV editor and working with UVs in a manual mode.